Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're so glad you could make it. Just for those who don't know, this event is part of our Career Week series, a joint effort by Levagon Singapore and Bali. I'm Rachel, the Marketing and Communications Manager for both campuses, and I'll be the moderator for today's talk. Just to give you an overview, we are a nine-week intensive coding bootcamp across 38 cities worldwide with over 7,000 alumni and more than 290 startups have been launched by them. Our next batch in Singapore will be starting soon on May 18, remotely until the circuit breaker is over. And just a heads up, we are now offering funding opportunities of up to 70% off for eligible Singaporeans and PRs. We have included our contact details in the chat, so you can just uh, check there. In addition to our bootcamp, we also offer customizable courses for, for businesses, and you can find out more with the link that we have also included uh, in the chat. And we will also be launching a data science bootcamp in the second half of the year. No doubt, if you're in Singapore, you may be familiar with the brand already. Here with us today is Jorina Ku, who is a tech recruiter at Foodpanda a tech startup in Singapore specializing in food delivery services. Dorina is an experienced recruiter specializing in technology. She has partnered with established companies and startups in building their tech capabilities across engineering, product, design, and data. In addition, she has spent one year supporting career changers with their transitions into tech as a career coach. We'll be going through a short presentation and then diving into the questions, and then we'll be running through some examples at the end. Over to you, Jorina. Hi, everyone. I'm um, really get, glad to be here. Um, thanks, Rachel, and thanks, um, Little Wagon's team, for inviting me. So um, today, we'll begin off with um, a presentation, a short presentation on, on CV preparation. Um, and then uh, we'll follow by a couple of um, CV um, you know, examples. And, and of course, and then we'll proceed on to LinkedIn. Um, profiles and, and how we can actually better, um, you know, prep our, our LinkedIn profile to kind of like attract more attention to potential employers. So I um, understand that most of you guys here probably are going through the um, courses or have gone through or um, probably thinking of going through um, the boot camps with the wagon. So um, my, my, my talk or my sharing session will be more focused on um, how, you know, public people, uh, career changers are looking at, you know, editing or preparing their CV to make it, um, you know, more attractive to tech um, employers out there after they graduate from their, from their, um, from the book, uh, book camps. So um, let me share my screen with you guys. Um, for CV preparation, I'll go through a couple of um, basic info and um, you know require sort of like re, um, best practices to have um, in your CV. Um, and and at, at any point in time, if you feel like um, you know there's any questions, um, go ahead and post them onto the link that has been provided, and then we'll answer um, them later on towards the end um, of the presentation. So um, these are basically some of the outlines that we will actually be going through. Um, things like what are the basics, what are the best practices, certain structure, design, um, and, and tips that you guys can actually uh, you know, use for your, the development of a CV. So um, to begin, um, of course, uh, you know, all CVs or all resumes um, will definitely need to have the following um, because, uh, you know, your CV is like the first impression of um, your, your, your experience and, and yourself to people out there, to people whom you have actually applied um, a job with. So um, many times that is like our, our recruiters, um, most of the times they will spend like, you know, the first 15 to 30 minutes actually going through CVs, um, using that first 15 to 30 minutes to actually uh, make a decision whether to proceed this candidate on to the next uh, round of, um, you know, interview, be it the first conversation with the recruiter, him or herself, or um, direct with the first, um, first round of, you know, technical assessment or with the hiring manager. So um, I would say for, for CV, um, when you actually develop your own CV, um, be it, you know, 
whether it's the first time or you know whether you have been doing this for like the past say um x number of years um always make sure that you you actually spend a lot of time uh you know crafting or kind of like um uh, making sure that uh, whatever details or, or information that you're going to put into your cv um you know it's crafted in a way that it's what the um, employers would actually want or actually attract their attention. So um, I think this uh, slides deck will be shared with you guys towards the end. So um, there are certain tips uh, online that you guys can actually find as well as to what makes a good uh, junior, be junior or, or senior uh, developer's resume. So um, as I mentioned, recruiters will usually spend on average 15 seconds or more um, usually, the more time a recruiter spend on your CV, the more likely that the CV is going to be a, a no. Um, you know, if it doesn't hit or strikes the recruiter within this uh, few 15 to 30 seconds, um, you know, it's, it's more or less a no. Um, so, um, whatever you do on your CV, um, make sure to keep it short. Um, do not send like you know five to 15 pages of uh, cvs which we do actually see in the market still um these days so if possible um keep it to about a page um that's what i usually advise um you know candidates to do um especially those in uh in the past when i was um, working uh, as a career coach for um the career changes always keep it short and sweet and straight to the point so um in terms of templates some of you guys might ask like you know should we actually design it what should the colors be um what type of fonts should we use um you know should we put in photos should we put in um pictures things like that so um what you can do it's usually um as i mentioned make sure you know your cv is clear it's concise it's targeted um do not over design your cv so for example, um, for web, uh, web engineers, right? Uh, when we look at CV, some of the key things that we look at are definitely things like, um, you know, your name for sure. Um, education, it's something that um, most companies are looking at. Actually, that really depends on uh, which type of companies, large or small scale that you actually apply to. So certain companies or certain startups, they actually emphasize a lot on education. Um, whereas there are um, more companies these days whereby they don't necessarily just look at, um, you know, which university you come from or which, um, you know, uh, you know, whether you have computer science degrees or not. So um, I would say, firstly, your name. Um, in terms of photo wise, it really depends. So majority of the time, we don't actually, you know, decide whether we want to shortlist a candidate based on his or her photos. I would advise to um, remove the photos so that you can actually have more space to to put in um, some of the key uh, your key responsibilities or your key um, products and projects that you have worked on or developed. So um, that's a uh, name education. Of course, always remember to put in your uh, contact details. So we do actually have a lot of um, based on my own personal experience, we have candidates that submitted their CV, submitted their resumes, but that there's like no important information like emails or contacts. So we always remember to keep, uh, to have at least your emails and your contact numbers there so that the recruiter can reach you um, in, in, you know, whichever form that, that they can. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the two things. Um, of, on top of that, for web engineers, um, usually we will look at GitHub. So I would assume most of you guys would have at least your GitHub accounts or would have at least um, have it with um, projects or, or things that you have worked on uploaded into GitHub. So that is something that um, recruiters uh, do actually take into uh, consideration when they look at, you know, overall your CV and then they will click on either your um, GitHub. And for some of you, if you guys have um, you know, your own personal websites that actually showcase your projects, be it um, with the boot camps or be it with, uh, you know, on your own or some of your other freelance projects, um, you know, always just, just have them there because these are like the best testimonies of the work that you have done so far. All right. Um, so um, 
moving on so apart from your name your contact details your um you know your website your github link um your education always um have your work experience past and present so um in my um you know one year of career coaching with um, career changes um a lot of them they have the concern as to you know whether my previous work or whether my previous um job actually matters um you know for my next employer in tech so that brings us back to the point whereby you know every time when you look um for a role when you look at a jd always customize your um, cv accordingly so for example we do have um you know people out there uh, students or alumni out there who might come from a uh, background say like sales and marketing um aviation nothing to do with tech at all but you would probably have say like five to six years of uh, prior work, work experience say managing teams um project management um you know, working with various different stakeholders to ensure, you know, successful delivery of a certain uh, work or project that you have been tasked. But this might not be related to tech or, or web development. It's actually fine because um, for engineers, we don't just look at, um, you know, candidates who has relevant tech experience. They say like, um, you know, like for example, Food Panda right now, we use um, tech stacks like React, like Golang, like um, uh, Node.js. So it's actually fine if these um, three key uh, technical skills, you are not super experienced um, with them, as long as you have actually managed to showcase, um, you know, your GitHub or your, or your projects um, in, in your CV, uh, you know, for the recruiter to actually view. The other things that uh, recruiters actually look at are soft skills. So um, taking um, Food Panda into example, you know, the tech and product team here. Um, over here, uh, technology, it's, it's, it's one area. The other area is that um, for, for our engineers um, who are coming in to be part of the team, they actually need to be able to um, communicate with not only other engineers, but with designers and with um, uh, product managers. So these these two other um, members in the team are people that they will be working really closely with, and you know no matter what engineers will still have to communicate with them. And on a larger uh, scope of things, um, where we've seen is that you know apart from these um, product managers and designers that you're working on, you know to develop um, products for the company, there are also stakeholders that you have to you know, get in touch with, you have to communicate things like um, the marketing teams, the sales teams. So communication, um, it's, it's definitely something that's important. Uh, teamwork, collaboration, these are important things that uh, we actually look at um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the first 15 to 30 seconds uh, in, in a CV. So if you definitely have um, experience, you know, working with, uh, you know, in teams in your previous role, do always highlight this. Um, you know, how you manage to uh, deliver, deliver certain projects um, successful um, within a, a period of, you know, a timeline that has been, uh, you know, decided by you and the team. Um, project management, how you, how you actually manage, um, you know, timelines with not just your team, but with other um, stakeholders in, in, within the company, um, be it tech or non-tech. Um, and, and at the same time, you, if you have actually managed teams before, it's always good to actually put that in as well. You know, mentorship experience, um, um, team management experience. Of course, uh, we don't, or recruiters or other companies don't necessarily expect you to manage a team straight in into a web engineer role or um, any developer role straight after boot camps. But with all this at the back of their head, um, a lot of times this actually helps when it comes to after you join the company, what are some of the career progression or what are what are some of the um, uh, things that you can value add into the company in addition to just um, the tech and uh, you know the, the technical skills that, that you have actually um, uh, learned or picked up during your times at, at the boot camps that you have um, attended. 
Okay. And um, one other important thing uh, in your CV is definitely, um, you know, the tech stack that you have experience in. Um, don't just put in all your um, prior relevant experience, things like uh, managing teams or the soft skills, but always remember to have your um, tech, um, you know, skills that you have acquired um, during your, your time in, in the boot camps or, or, you know, during your time, uh, you know, learning online. Uh, via various different, um, you know, learning platforms. So at least put in things like, you know, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, or any relevant uh, skills that um, that is reflected in the job description that you are applying to. Um, but do not oversell yourself. Um, if you have just read, read up on things like Node.js, but you haven't really worked on a project, that, that you know you use Node.js on, it's best to leave that out. You can always share that during your interview, um, you know, when, when you have your first or second round that, all right, these are certain uh, technologies that you have read up and it's something that you are exploring and, and learning um, so as to show and kind of like demonstrate to the interviewers that you are an individual who are, you know, who is, who is always constantly um, open and, and um, passionate about learning new technologies. So um, the next point is uh, uh, make sure that you have uh, you know, confidence in whatever you have written in your CV. So always um, take pride in your um, personal achievements and give a personal touch, not just listing out every single technology tech um, stack that you have learned or picked out out there. But at the same time, you know, tying back to what you have achieved in your previous role, um, you know, certain soft skills that you have picked up, um, because or, or even you know your experience working with um, cross-functional teams across various countries and region. So ultimately, these days, um, for a lot of tech companies, you don't just work with the tech teams that's based here, you know, in in Singapore or in wherever you're based currently. Um, there are a lot of companies whereby they have. Um, uh, remote teams, remote tech teams that are set up in, in other parts of the world. They have um, uh, subsidiary companies whereby you might need to work uh, directly with their tech teams there. So communication across um, cross borders, how you actually make uh, ensure you know successful delivery of projects um, with your counterparts overseas, that's also important, which is something that you can actually add in, into your CV as well. So um, in terms of structure, it's always best to have your structure um, as what's listed here in the deck. Um, your personal details, as what I mentioned earlier, your name, your email, your contact number, uh, your contact details, your, um, uh, your GitHub, your website URL. That's uh, something that um, recruiters or hiring managers will definitely click in um, during that first 15 to 30 seconds um, once they open up your CV. So um, personal summary. So how, how do you actually craft up your personal summary or if that is something that's important? Um, so if you are somebody who is um, you know, doing a career switch from say a non-tech into tech, um, do leverage on this uh, personal summary section. Um, usually it's about three to five lines long, um, right? at the top of your CV, um, whereby you actually write, include things like, okay, your, your leadership skills, your, um, you know, how um, international or well-versed you are um, in, in different uh, aspects, you know, of, of the soft skills, coupled with your passion in, you know, developing um, products for, say, the logistics uh, industry, if, if, for example, Ninja Van is something that you're gonna apply to, or coupled with, um, you know, your your interest in say food delivery, making an impact into um, the the users not only in in Singapore or in overseas, plus you know whatever um, you know technologies that you have picked up. So it's it's a mix of your own flavor um, about your um, past um, experience, um, the soft skill side, plus you know your interest, your um, your, your passion in, in technology and kind of like couple it, linked it with, um, you know, your, your passion for that specific domain or industry that you're applying into. And then of course, we'll move on into work experience. 
um, projects, uh, specifically the projects that you have done during your time at, at the boot camps, um, you know, showcasing what uh, a, a line or two about what your project is about, what you have developed, what are some of the tech stack that you have used. Um, and then finally, your education and your interest. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, personal details, these are what that you would probably need to um, best to have it in, in your CV right at the top. And then um, followed by a personal summary. So um, say if previously you are a project manager and you know you, you want to move into um, web development and you have been building or leading teams previously these are some of the things that you can actually add in into your personal summary so um, the objective of it is to actually really um, let the recruiter or the um, the hiring manager at first glance uh, know that okay this person is entrepreneurial this person um, you know is passionate in doing web development and this person um, you know uh, has prior experience, you know, being a co-founder and, you know, all this um, kind of like adds up to who this person is as an individual before um, the the recruiter or the hiring manager actually move forward um, further down um, to actually look at all the different uh, relevant experience, work experience that you have actually, uh, you know, gained during um, your course of your career. So if, um, so for uh, career changers who used to be from a different background, not from a software engineer role. So usually um, what I would actually advise is, for example, your company, maybe your, your experience as a sales manager, your work, your, your tenure there. So you can always put in a line about what the company is about um, if you have space, followed by two or three pointers as to uh, the your, your soft skills like what you can actually bring over from being a sales manager you know things like communications things like um uh, uh you know sharing with um you know uh, strangers or, or people that you're not familiar with of of your products so because these are certain uh, skill sets that's actually pretty important when it comes to being an engineer whereby you actually need to communicate as i mentioned earlier to um, the sales uh, teams, marketing teams, if you are going to build a product for um, these different business units. Um, yeah, and always, you know, show impact of your actions. So basically, don't just list down your responsibilities. List down, like, you know, um, from your experience, um, what you have done, how it actually impacts um, the, the, the company or, or the users at the end of the day. And of course, um, for education, um, we do have, you know, uh, you know, some of us, we do come from um, uh, different uh, master's degrees or different universities. Some of us, we might not even have a university degree, um, which is fine. As long as um, after going through the boot camp, putting this down your, um, you know, your basically like the wagon and then um, your period that you have been there and then followed by the rest of your um, educational um, you know, history, and, and that would be great. So usually if the individual doesn't come from, say, a computer science degree or um, any relevant tech degree, it's fine as long as um, you, know, you have actually stated in your CV that you, know, you come from a certain book camp and you have spent um, you know, a certain amount of time completing it. Um, you know, that, that would actually be great because at the end of the day, it's really about the projects that you have done and it's really about um, what you have actually uploaded into your GitHub or onto your website that actually makes the impact. So um, projects are always important um, in, in your CV because ultimately this will be the ones that uh, that's going to help you to kind of, um, uh, you know, let the recruiter know that, okay, besides having um, five to six years of work experience that has the relevant soft skills that we are looking at, you do have web projects, uh, web products or projects that you have developed that you can actually share. So um, a lot of times when our recruiters they actually reject CVs, it's a lot of times because 
um, in the CV, it doesn't show any projects, it doesn't show any GitHub links, it's just basically mentioned things like, oh, I'm responsible for creating a website, I'm responsible for um, developing a product, but we don't really know what exactly have you done and, and where's the product that you um, kind of like claim that you have developed. So as um, so personal web projects, it's really important. Um, you can always uh, have a section and uh, that lists like maybe a line or two about the projects that you have developed, you know, in terms of what this project is about. It could be, um, you know, a shopping cart, it could be a game, it could be, um, you know, a marketplace. Um, just a line or two will do and put the direct URL um, either at the top or at the bottom of a description because that's where um, recruiters or hiring managers will start clicking in. Um, make sure that they are um, clickable. Don't just state it there um, because um, recruiters and hiring managers, if they do actually, uh, for hiring managers specifically, if they actually look through um, the applications daily, there are always hundreds and thousands of applications that flow in. So you want to do whatever it takes to catch the um, attention of the hiring manager of the uh, recruiter and at the same time make it as easy as possible for them to have to access the products or the projects that you have worked on so um you know when when you actually have uh the, the one or two liners about your project always remember to put in your url and um you know make sure that you know they are clickable direct on your cv And uh, yes, earlier we mentioned uh, technical and language skills is a, is a section in your CV that you definitely have to include in. Um, make sure that um, whatever you include in, it's something that you have actually worked on and, it, and it's not just like I'm reading up right now, I am exploring now, I am uh, interested in and going to learn right now. So whatever you list on your CV, um, you know, recruiters and, and hiring managers will always take it on face front that you will have experience in, in working uh, with these uh, different technologies or databases. So um, be as, as uh, accurate or uh, as truthful as possible. And, you know, whatever tech stack or technology that you are interested in picking up or you are learning or you are reading, um, you know, reading up to, to learn, um, you can always share them during your conversation with the recruiter or with the hiring manager. Okay, and uh, of course, um, volunteer work and interest. Um, this, I say, it's definitely optional. Um, a lot of times you might not have enough uh, space um, in your one to two page CV to actually add this in. Um, however, if you have um, you know, additional blank spaces which you would like to fill, you can always um, put them in, especially for volunteer work, right? Um, if you actually read up on companies whereby they actually do CSRs, um, it's always good to actually add them in if you actually are, you know, doing those uh, volunteer work because it ties into the company's values um, and, and what they do as a company. And, and that that often adds as an additional um, value add of your profile, um, you know, when they are actually viewing through um, your, your CV. So um, a lot of time can uh, individuals or um, alumni or students, they actually ask, how do we, um, uh, you know, what are some of the tools or do we just use a Word doc? Do we do a PDF format well, when we actually uh, you know, work on our CV. You have all your content ready. Um, these days, there are actually a lot of um, uh, templates online that's free for for individuals like you and I to use. So don't be afraid to actually use them. Uh, as long as you know you don't use more than three colors. Uh, keep it simple, not too fanciful, not too many um, background images, things like that. So here are certain tools that you know we. Um, you know, would like to share with you guys. So there are tools um, like uh, Enhance E, whereby, you know, you can actually browse the available CV templates. So we don't have to, um, a lot of times when, if we happen to use a Word doc, you know, we might not be able to make certain alignments, adjustments as and how we like it. 
So this um, CV templates are readily available. Maybe can you touch on what are the major mistakes people make on their CVs and LinkedIn profiles that stand out to you as a recruiter? Okay, sure. So um, I'll, one interesting uh, mistake that, I mean, not a mistake, but um, let me just share with you guys uh, Prima's CV that he actually shared with me. So, okay, here, here we go. All right. So here's a Prima CV and, uh, you know, as, as what I shared earlier, you know, there's education and, you know, all the different, um, information about the, um, his, his work experience, right? Um, uh, one thing that I would not encourage individuals to actually use is actually infographics here. So, you know, you have a bar, you have like probably things like, uh, you might even like rate yourself seven out of 10, 10 out of 10 for things like PHP and JavaScript. I would say please don't do this because we do have, um, I have actually met a lot of uh, uh, hiring managers, you know, engineering managers who will use this um, in a cheeky way. So meaning to say, oh, so this guy says that his PHP is like 9 out of 10. So let me choose the most difficult, um, you know, PHP uh, problems uh, that I can actually use, uh, you know, as a discussion for this candidate during my interview with him. But a lot of time, the engineering manager, he might come with a lot of years of experience, right? So he might come with like say 10 to 15 years. And then um, the individual, the, the engineer, he might be, um, you know, coming with just like two to three years. So there's like a kind of like a mismatch there as to like my nine out of 10 versus the engineering's uh, level of nine out of 10. So. Right. Um, please don't use uh, infographics and, and ratings for yourself because you might actually be digging a, a hole for yourself during your interview session. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is uh, one key thing that is uh, uh, definitely a no-no. Um, so I would like to probably go into uh, LinkedIn right now. All right. Okay. So for LinkedIn, um, I'd like to share with you guys an, an example of one of the um, ex-alumni that uh, in my previous company that I have actually uh, helped with um, his uh, career switch into tech. So um, so for LinkedIn, it's okay. So the purpose of LinkedIn, it's, it's always uh, definitely to showcase yourself because you don't necessarily you know, send out, you know, tons of your CV across um, all the different companies, across every single person that you have met. So um, for LinkedIn, a lot of times it's, it's really for you to showcase yourself and, um, and, and actually definitely for recruiters and hiring managers to look at um, yourself as an individual uh, when they are headhunting for candidates for their own team. So, um, uh, so for LinkedIn, uh, always have a professional photo as, as always, um, you know, have your name and um, uh, similarly to your CV, uh, what I would say is that, you know, do have all your projects uh, listed out. Sorry, do have all your projects listed out, um, you know, as, as what I shared with you guys earlier for um, your CV section, whereby you, you actually share the, the tech products or projects that you have actually worked on. So um, reason is because your LinkedIn might be the first thing or the first profile that um, anybody is actually looking, uh, you know, um, uh, that, that doesn't have access to your CV. So, um, so for, for LinkedIn, uh, you know, with all these um, projects that's listed, have your GitHub and everything listed there as well so that um, the pot your potential employers will actually be able to see and view what are the projects that you have uh, developed or, or create. Um, and of course, um, in your, your previous roles, your previous jobs, don't just discard them, don't just you know, delete them away and, and just have this section. Always have that in. Um, the good thing about LinkedIn is that there is no um, uh, limit as to how much things you can put in or how much words that you can put in. So um, if you find it relevant in terms of, say, your soft skills wise, um, certain projects that you have achieved or, or even um, uh, certain like awards that you have achieved in your previous company, if you find them relevant, um, you know, just feel free to have them in. 
um, make sure that they are all being, uh, you, you know, it's, it's clear and it's concise and it's organized. So like, like for this uh, individual here, he actually, um, he's pretty, uh, you know, for, for all his uh, employments, he has it in the similar format whereby he has uh, a short description as to what the company is about or how long he has been there and, and just like two or three pointers about what he has done or, or some of his uh, achievements. So do not discount them, add that in, um, at least potential employers will know that, um, you know, uh, this individual is, is not fresh out of uh, a boot camp with no prior experience. It would actually help uh, with their own uh, profile and, and profiling to the to, um, potential employers out there. And um, next will come, so that will be like education, uh, education similar to how you have it in your CV and uh, you know any other certifications that, that you have. Um, skills and endorsements is actually something that's pretty important as well. So if you are able to get, you know, your um your your classmates or, or your instructor to to help you with this, it, it actually shows um you know uh more confident in terms of, of your profile. It's not just whereby the individual is saying that, oh I know JavaScript, I know Node.js, but um you know doesn't show any any projects here and doesn't um you know have any endorsements from his or her um classmates and, and instructors. So um this section will actually grow over the years. Um, you know, after you know you graduated from the boot camp, you go into your first and second um role in, in the different uh, tech companies in the market. And then uh and, and finally of course accomplishment, right? Um there are like hackathons things that you can actually um you know participate in. So um apart from projects wise, if there are any hackathons available in, in your country, in your market, you always, you know, just go ahead and 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 participate with your with your friends or, or with your classmates, um, so as to you know show and boost your own profile, um, show to the employers that you know it's uh, you are you are really passionate about this industry. You are not just picking up new skills. You are not just working on products, but you are also engaging yourself um in in the tech market in the tech industry, yeah. So um, for LinkedIn, I think that will hi. be it. Um, yes, yeah. Jorina. Uh, hi, everyone. Prima here. Uh, for those who didn't know me, I'm the lecturer for Lovagon uh, in Singapore Batch and Bali Batch. Uh, I just want to start to grab some attention to questions from, the, from Slido, from the audience itself. There are a bunch of questions here. Uh, we talk about LinkedIn profile, uh, and I think uh, you really covered that about ideal LinkedIn profile. Uh, the third question is something that I want to raise. Do recruiters check the skill match on LinkedIn? Uh, um, what do you guys mean exactly by skill match? Uh, perhaps in this case is, uh, you know, when, when you mention like uh, you are accomplished in certain uh, certain programming language or certain certifications, do you actually match that skill in LinkedIn? Uh, okay, so for LinkedIn, um, you know, when we do our search, uh, I mean, that there, there are many like search um, ways that every recruiter, um, you know, actually use. So for example, if I'm looking at like uh, Node.js, if I'm looking at uh, say React, um, these are, um, you know, the, the keywords that I will definitely use. But once I get into the, the profile, um, you know, it's, it's not just about looking at whether the person has just, uh, you know, react on, on Node.js in, in the LinkedIn, right? It's, it's also about, you know, looking at what are some of the um, key, um, you know, achievements or products or projects that the individual has actually developed. So that's where um, the GitHub links come in. That's where the, um, you know, your uh, portfolios or, or exact links to the, the projects, the specific projects come in, and that's where um, you know, recruiters and hiring managers will start clicking on it and, and, and look through them. Okay, uh, I think I want to continue with the second as well. Uh, this is very particular for Singapore context, but in your case, as a foreigner who are trying to apply a position in Singapore, do you think uh, putting, a, putting a specific reason that I don't need an EP is important? 
Um, so if you don't need an EP, um, probably you are on, you know, LTDP or if you're on DP, um, please put it, please put on, on, on your um, CV. It could be like near, next to your name, underneath your name, next to your contact details right at the top. So um, because right now, you know, with all the COVID situation and MOM laws, um, things are actually pretty tight here in terms of, you know, hiring for uh, foreign talents. So if you don't need an EP, for example, and it's actually something that a lot of companies are open to, you know, once, you know, if you, if they can actually apply LOC for you, um, if you stay there, you know, you are on DP, you don't need that, they will definitely get in touch with you. Otherwise, a lot of times, uh, you know, people, they will actually assume that, okay, this individual actually needs an EP, I can't apply for EP, so I will actually reject the, the um, profile. Right. Thank you. Uh, just for clarification, for those who are not living in Singapore, EP stands for Employment Pass. That's a kind of like a working visa uh, to work in Singapore. Uh, and yeah, related to that. Uh, on to the next questions. You get uh, one more thumbs here. Uh, any tips for the cover letter? We mentioned about CV, resumes, and LinkedIn, uh, but cover letter itself, how much is too much in terms of information? Um, okay, so for cover letter, honestly, um, for myself, for my experience, I don't really look at cover letters that much. Um, of course, that really depends on individual and of course, it depends on the role itself, right? So um, for cover letters, the ones that I have actually seen, um, the ones that, you know, are just nice, it's definitely things like, you know, what your previous experience is in a nutshell, um, just a paragraph will do, and how you can actually value add into um, the role that the individual is applying to. So essentially, you can try to have this in like just three to four lines as a, a personal summary in your CV. All right, uh, I will, for everyone else, uh, the slide is still up, uh, but in the meantime, maybe uh, Rachel, you have some questions that you want to ask to Jorina yeah, as well? To answer the question about, yes, it will be, uh, the session will be recorded and um, will be shared. We'll try to send that through in an email, but it's uh, recording as of this uh, moment. Um, okay, moving on to more questions. So you kind of explained how, how you can be really detailed in a LinkedIn profile. So how should your LinkedIn profile differ from your CV because you really have to summarize and cut it down? Um, for CV, as, as I mentioned there, it's really like straight to the point and you have to tailor accordingly to the JD or the job that you're applying to, right? So for example, if you're, actually up, if you're very interested in say food tech, like for food panda, and uh, you can actually tailor accordingly, maybe you might have been working in an F&B business previously or you might have been, um, you know, you know, uh, an, an avid like food lover, things like that. These are things that you can actually put it into your CV to actually grab the attention of um, the, the interviewer or the other recruiter um, when they actually look through your profile. So at least they know, oh, this person has been in relevant industry, right? But then for, for, uh, for LinkedIn, it's not tailored to a specific job. It's not tailored to a specific JD. You don't use your LinkedIn um, all over the place to, to apply for a job. Similarly, you don't flash your CV over the pages for people to view. So for LinkedIn, um, you can be more detailed. You can add in more um, things about yourself because that's where um, majority of the people who use LinkedIn or, or you know, recruiters or hiring managers who use LinkedIn, it's really about sourcing um, you know, or headhunting for candidates. And you know, if, if you have more than just you know, your projects, if you have things like you know, the various hackathons that you're able to um, attend or, or you know, prizes that you have won out of those um, hackathons, um, put it in so that um, it kind of glamour and, and make your profile more, more attractive um, when it comes to people approaching you for a certain role or for certain job opportunities at their company. Um, so the next, uh, another question that, um, that we had previously is, um, do tech recruiters hold any specific preference to someone who has a computer science degree and what are the, some of the considerations that you have when you look at profiles of bootcamp graduates? Um, as mentioned earlier, it, it really depends on, on companies. So 
um, certain companies, they don't emphasize a lot on, okay, you must have a, a, a computer science degree, you must come from top universities, things like that. Um, while, whereas other companies, they, they kind of like emphasize more on the impact or the product that you have developed uh, to the market, to the users. So for that, it really depends on the type of companies that you are applying to. Um, a lot of times you can actually find them out, um, you know, just by going through a brief uh, LinkedIn search about engineers in, in those companies, you can take a look at their background, you know, you might actually be quite surprised to find that um, some companies, most of their engineers, they don't come with like computer science degree. They, they would come from uh, boot camps. Um, you know, Air, Air Asia, it's, it's one company that, uh, you know, um, actually hire a number of uh, boot camps graduates. Um, you know, as long as, you know, you have your fundamentals, right, as long as you can perform during your interviews, as long as you can show them that, you know, you're interested in this field, um, you know, a lot of times it, it, it shouldn't, like, matter that much. Okay, uh, let's go to, like, the top question on Slido. For career switchers with six to seven years of work experience in a different industry, how should one negotiate for a reasonable salary without starting as a, at a fresh grad pay? All right, looking at this is a difficult question. Um, so um, if you are looking at engineering roles um, and if you're switching into, you know, from anything that's non-engineer to engineer, um, you would definitely need to be prepared to kind of uh, have that, that, that salary um, kind of pay cut. Um, but at the same time, do use your previous experience and leverage on them when it comes to negotiating for a reasonable salary. So that being said, you can always say that, you know, you have um, prior experience, uh, say, doing project management. That's something that a fresh grad wouldn't have done. It. And it's actually pretty important in, in any tech companies these days, whereby, um, you know, things are developed on time, are published, um, you know, basically a launch on time, right? So. So um, you can always leverage on your previous experience, things like project management, uh, things like, um, you know, working with very senior stakeholders, um, influencing decisions, things like that, which, um, you know, you would have probably acquired in your six to seven years of work experience previously in a different industry. So this is where like the soft skill um, kinds of come in to leverage um, on your profile and, and which you can actually leverage on. and um, kind of help with negotiating for a reasonable salary. Cool. Uh, I guess move on to the, the next popular uh, question. Is the hiring slowing down right now due to the current situation? All right. So it's a yes and it's a no, depending on company. So for for Food Panda, we are currently still hiring uh, because we have certain like plans, headcounts, and roadmaps already um, confirm and kind of like plan out like, um, you know, a, a, a quarter ago. So we are still staying on with that plan. Um, but there are also companies out there, um, even though they are in tech, um, they are in a very unfortunate, you know, situation because of the situation. So um, it, it really depends on, on the company. Um, there are I would say it's it's like a yes and a no. Right. Okay. And um, just for people who are not in Singapore, this this applies to you know um, during this experience in within Singapore. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess we maybe just do one more question. Joanna, um, sorry. If I may add on on top of that questions, uh, I mean hiring is slowing down almost everywhere. And I mean in this COVID situations, I think everyone's are facing the same issues. Uh, do you have? Do you think uh, in in if you may share like or uh, you you see a trend among different companies? Do you see a hiring freeze for how many months? You know, like do you think uh, this kind of situation is gonna? gonna exist for a, uh, for a while or uh, what what would what should we expect you think um, depending on the nature of the company and the business of course um, if it's not in like you know say essential services 
uh, probably there would be or would have already things, like, especially in travel industry. Like I have seen a lot of companies, uh, a lot of candidates coming from travel industries, whereby um, they have been laid off, whereby they have been offered and then, you know, offer retracted because of, of the situation. So um, I would say that really depends on the nature of the business and, and the company. Um, you know, hiring freeze, uh, there are companies I know whereby they have actually stopped. Um, definitely we are looking at maybe things will probably pick up at the end of Q3 or Q4 this year. Um, Q2, a lot of people in the market has been uh, discussing that it's definitely gone. Um, Q3, it's it's not here, not there. Um, we'll probably, if on a very positive side, we're probably looking at Q4. Uh, another, another bunch of questions that I've raised, that was raised by my students or my alumni uh, is, one is a possibility, okay, if let's say you are now becoming uh, or applying as a software developer, uh, will it be possible mm -hmm. for you to become a product manager afterwards? If that should, should, uh, should become a software developer is a foot in the door for you, and on top of that, if you want actually want to become a product manager after your boot camps or after your, uh, you know, after your school, do you think it's possible to become a product manager right away? Or uh, what kind of what kind of skills that we need to show showcase? Okay, so um, for engineers who wants to move into product manager, yes, definitely. So um, there are companies, uh, I mean, companies, they usually hire two types of uh, PMs. One PM, it's uh, that hasn't have any technical background or knowledge. And the other one, it's, you know, people who used to be engineers, who used to be even like data scientists, um, who, who wants to move, who moved into um, PM. So that uh, the, the tech PMs actually help the, the company or the business or, or even the teams uh, when it comes to developing product because the tech PM can actually um, understand and see uh, things from the engineer side or uh, point of view and, and you know it actually helps with the communication between uh, tech and non-tech. Um, so if you are somebody who's fresh out of bootcamp and you want to get into a PM role, I would say that would be more difficult. It's always easier to actually get into a PM role after you have been in a software engineer role for say two to three years and you kind of have um, uh, the opportunity within your company to slowly move into product and then from there you can actually move into a different company as a full-fledged product manager if you like. Um, for people who just uh, graduated out of boot camps, um, wanting to go into PM, it's more difficult it's because a lot of times for PM interviews it's really about what are the products that you have developed from scratch? What are the products that you have launched? Um, how do you uh, manage the entire uh, product development lifecycle? What are some of the challenges? What are some of the uh, metrics? Um, and there will even be a case study on it, you know, on the spot. So this would kind of like, it, it's definitely more difficult for individual who, you know, without any, um, you know, just come out of straight from boot camps going into PMs because there might be a lot of answers and experience that you might not have gained um, to actually secure a PM role. Right, right. Okay. Uh, another question that raised a lot, right? So a lot of alumni told me that uh, I felt disheartened or I felt like, a, a, you know, discouraged when I see all of the job requirements that says, you know, one to two years experience, but I don't have any experience. I only have, you know, a toy app essentially because you're just, you know, have a school projects or have a bootcamp projects, how would you go around with that? Do you think having a bootcamp experience still um, allows you to have a foot in the door when you are applying for something that's, you know, requiring one or two, three years experience? Uh, okay, so um, as long as you see any job description that has like less than three years experience required, um, feel free to actually go ahead and uh, apply to these companies or, or, to, or to this job because a lot of times JDs are there to actually find the most perfect candidate. And um, how it works is that usually if uh, the companies or the businesses are unable to actually find like three years of experience, they will kind of like lower to two years or to one year. And um, certain companies, depending on uh, how fast they're expanding or how much they're hiring, um, when we actually look uh, at a CV, we don't straight 
uh, we go in and count, okay, this person has like five years of experience. Okay, then I will I'll continue, um, you know, my, my assessment of this individual uh, profile. It's really about the projects that, that catches their eye, that the GitHub links, um, you know, and, and, and the technology that, that is relevant to the company. So as long as if you see like one year, two year, three years, um, do apply. And at the same time, some companies, they might just put up a job ad for three to four rows of different levels just to see, um, you know, just to get as many uh, application or as many responses that they are able to. And then they will start hiring, okay, maybe um, an engineer with one year first, a fresh person with one year, uh, a fresh uh, fresh grad just out of boot camp. Um, and then, you know, starting to tailor around, you know, their manpower planning based on the, the candidates or, or the individuals that they have hired. Oh, a good idea, a good news for everyone who wants to apply for those kind of jobs. <laughs> Yeah, because you will never be able to actually see a JD that says um, fresh grad. Um, there are like, you know, with the big bigger companies, with the MNCs who have like, um, you know, management uh, programs available. But apart from that, most of the time you don't really see like, okay, with zero years of experience, you are, you are, you are open to um, applying for the role. Thanks, Darina. I think that's all the time we have for questions. In the chat, we're going to put a link to the survey so you can receive um, the slides from this evening's uh, session. Thank you so much, Jarina, for taking the time this evening to speak at our event. It was very insightful for all of us, and thank you for being so thorough. And thank you, everyone else, for joining. Don't forget to sign up for our other Career Week events. Cracking the Technical Interview is on Friday, and next week we're going to be discussing um, launching startups during COVID times. Just as a reminder for alumni, once you've updated your resume with the advice from this talk, please send them to Singapore at levelground.org or Bali at levelground.org, depending on your campus, so that they can be reviewed by resume writers, uh, .sg. If anyone is interested in learning um, about our bootcamp and what we do, please visit our website or email us. Our next batch starts on May 18th. Uh, thank you for joining us. Here is a short clip of the Labagon uh, experience. The bootcamp ended with a project that we had two weeks to build. So along with two teammates, Blake and Kevin, we built a product, which I'd like to share with you today. Um, this product was inspired by the frustration that I previously felt as a new entrepreneur without a proper office. Um, I'm sure the thousands of freelancers in Singapore alone can relate. Um, for many of them, co-working spaces are just too expensive, and it's a real pain spending the first hour of every day looking for a restaurant or a cafe with Wi-Fi, power outlets, and of course, space. We developed the Cafe Collective, a marketplace that connects cafes looking to reach more customers and boost utilization, with freelancers looking for an affordable, convenient, and reliable workspace. I'm meeting a friend at Novena Square today, and so I'm gonna go ahead and search Novena Square. Great, so I have a couple cafes. Typically, I like cafes that have some background music and have natural lighting. I think today I'm gonna go with Craftsman Coffee. Here I get a description of the coffee shop, um, ambiance, tags that Craftsman Coffee has given. Uh, I can see the amenities that they have. So they have high-speed Wi-Fi and free water, which is amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and book um, a seat from, yeah, 4 to 6 p.m. is good. The $16 that I pay directly on the platform comes to me in cafe credit to spend once I check in. I found the wagon, um, loved what I saw in terms of program and format, and so I just went for it. Um, fast forward nine weeks, and I'm incredibly grateful for the experience, um, and honestly quite surprised at the amount that, of content they managed to squeeze into nine weeks. Um, Thanks again, everyone, and um, have a good night. <laughs>